Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to the Automation Morning Show for Friday, February 24th, 2023. Happy Friday, everyone. My name is Sean Tierney, and as we do every day, let's go ahead and start by taking a look at what's new in industrial automation. And first up, we have a new article from the folks over at Cognex, and this talks about the differences between barcode quality software and actual barcode verification. Now, this is a pretty detailed article, and if you are responsible for ensuring that the barcodes on your products are um, verified, then uh, this would probably be a good article to check out because there's quite a difference between just, you know, checking the quality or actually verifying that the barcode works in as it's supposed to be. Next up, we have a new article from OnLogix. They have an, a pretty good article about Windows 10 IoT. Now, I know we've all heard that name, but... You know, I really never knew what Windows 10 IoT was, except that maybe it was a stripped down version of Windows 10. And in this article, they actually go through it in quite some depth, talking about, um, you know, the longevity of it, talking about the requirements for updates and whatnot. And so if you were ever curious on what makes Windows 10 IoT different than, let's say, Windows 10 Professional, this is a great article. I it would encourage you checking it out. From there, I want to go over the software toolbox. If you're using their top server or you're going to be using it, this is definitely an excellent article. It talks about the differences between the client and server roles. And it also has a link in here to um, an excellent video. Like if you've never used top server, there's an excellent quick start video that kind of goes through and explains not only it, but the different services as well. From there, we'll go over the DigiKey. Now, I thought this was an excellent, pretty in-depth look at brushless direct current electric motors and how, uh, you know, a better way to commutate them. And, um, you know, not that you're going to be applying this in every day in your, uh, in your job, but still, I thought it was a very good technical refresher on some motor theory. And it may be something you want to, uh, you know, pass on to either an apprentice or maybe uh, you know, a youngster who has a science project coming up and uh, they're gonna be using motors in it. But I thought they did a really good job kind of going through the theory and how things work. So from there, I wanna go over to our product spotlight. Today I'm spotlighting my Logix Book of Knowledge. This is an ebook, a PDF that I put together. I took all the Control Logix articles that I had written over you know, the last 10 years. I combined them into one ebook and I updated them. I did some uh, spelling and grammar fixes. I also updated a lot of the images and updated a lot of the procedures. And I uh, compiled it into this one ebook that I have on sale now for just $9.99. Now, if you want to know what's in this ebook, right, you can see it all down here. I put every single uh, article that I uh, put in there in this list right here. And um, if you want to get a copy of it, you can just go to the automationblog.com forward slash B-O-K-1 for Book of Knowledge 1. And uh, it's just $9.99. That gets you a lifetime copy. And I do have a list of articles I want to update or create new for the next edition of this book. And whenever that comes out, it'll probably be later this year or early next year, you will get that for free if you buy this copy today. So with that, I want to go over next to uh, downloads. I did find a new download on Rockwell's sample code website. I've been checking this since the beginning of the year, and this is the first time I found a new one. And this one is an IEC 104 a bit of sample code. Now, I didn't really know what that was, right? So uh, after I downloaded it and I opened the zip file, I found this uh, PowerPoint inside of it. And it kind of goes through and explains that this is a communication protocol for transportation, typically. And uh, really goes through a lot of the details. Now, one of the odd things, though, I found with this was that the PowerPoints are dated 2011 and 2014. And the newest file in the zip file is 2019. So um, if we go back over to the sample code website, um, there's really no additional information about this file. So I'm not sure why it just showed up on the sample, web, uh, sample code website now, but you can see it was uploaded on February 21st, 2023. So in the last couple of days. And um, if you want to check it out, if you have any IEC 104 uh, communications you need to do, I will point out that they do mention in the sample code that the lowest model you can use is the L19. And that's a memory requirement, my understanding is. So uh, L19 and up. So in any case, I wanted to share that with you this morning. And now I want to go over to our pub crawl. And today I found two new publications. The first one 
is the uh, very, very uh, excellent S7 1500 ET 200 MP. That's the local I.O. for the S7 1500 manual collection. So this is all of the manuals that relate to those two product lines in one PDF. And uh, it's an excellent book. It has, I definitely recommend this to all my students. And uh, it really has everything you need to, uh, you know, get up to speed on the S7 1500 and actually maintain it, use it, and troubleshoot it. So definitely, if you have S7 1500s in your plant, this is a great PDF to have on your hard drive. And from there, we also found a new a manual over on the Emerson website. This is for the Fisher, I believe, MR98. And it's the instruction manual for those uh, regulators. And uh, if you're using those, be aware that there's new in, a new instruction manual for that product. From there, I want to go to our very first news tip that came in. I actually came in a few weeks ago and I missed it. And so, uh, but I want to thank Brandon T for sending it in. Uh, Brandon is a very passionate automation uh, expert. And uh, he sent me in a nice, very nice uh, message when he submitted the news tip. And it was about Wago. And uh, we actually had saw this, but... They uh, announced it on their site. So we check this every day with all the other websites we check. And uh, you can see recently, Wago was just talking about positions. A lot of companies do that at the beginning of the year. You know, this person was announced to be in this position and whatnot. Not something very interested for most of us technical people. But uh, in any case, uh, this was announced back in December 27th during the middle of the holidays. And so we didn't cover it in a show because it was already old by the time uh, we started doing the daily shows here this year. But that, now that Brandon sent that in, I thought it was a good opportunity to go back and take a look at it. And Brandon sent in, and these links are at automate.news. Brandon sent in two links to two manuals. The first is the, uh, the new product release. And this really talks about, you know, if you have a PFC 200 series CPU from Wago, PLC from Wago, um, you can now program it with Code Sys 3.5. Now, my understanding is you need a firmware update and you will likely need to update your uh, e cockpit so you can convert the code to Code Sys in a pain, painless fashion. But um, in any case, if you were going to just stop from scratch with CodeSys, you would just need the firmware update. But in any case, this does a great job explaining it. And um, the other document he shared was the migration guide. And this is actually pretty in-depth and it talks, look, if you really want to go ahead and migrate an existing system from eCockpit over to CodeSys, then uh, this is everything you're going to consider. And I thought it was a very well done very detailed document. And like Brandon said, it's not often you see a large vendor like Wago support free software with their with one of their main lines, right? And so uh, seeing that they were selling the e-cockpit, but now they're opening up hey, and saying, hey, if you want to use CodeSys and they're a developer, you can now do that. I think, and I agree with Brandon, that's a pretty nice thing for them to do and pretty amazing. And I guess e-cockpit is actually based on CodeSys. So um I have a friend who works at uh, Wago, and I'm trying to get him on the show to talk to us more about what's new and exciting there. But in any case, um, I wanted to share that story with you, and I wanted to thank Brandon for sending it in. From there, we're going to go over to our featured audio video file of the day, and this is a Q&A from back on the morning show on the 21st, where I talk about a, a reader or user who had um, a problem. He kept changing his Compact Logic's IP address, and whenever they cycle power, it came back with a different IP address. And so I walked through BOOP, DHCP, non-volatile memory, and other things that, uh, other thoughts that I had about his problem that could be causing it, including maybe just another one of your staff is doing it because he thinks it's supposed to be the other IP address. But in any case, um, from there, I want to go over to uh, what's coming. And this afternoon, I'm releasing the how to export, edit, and import tags in Factory Talk View Studio. That's a segment from a previous morning show. And so that will be its very own uh, episode here this afternoon around 3.30. From there, we'll go over to events. Horner has another event coming up on Thursday, no, on Tuesday, the 28th. And this is how to use Sheared I.O. with their um, PLCs or their what they call their all-in-one control system. So in any case, if you are if you are using Horner Automation, you may want to catch this new webinar coming up. It's completely free. And from there, I want to go over to our community corner. And if today is your birthday, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. I hope you have an awesome day. Isn't it great having a birthday on a Friday? So um, happy birthday, happy Friday. I hope you have a great uh, time. And if your birthday is this weekend, I hope you have a great uh, birthday this weekend. And now if you're connected with me on LinkedIn and you have your birthday in your profile, I want to wish you a personal happy birthday, starting with Mitchell, Naveen, Muhammad, John, 
Rich T, happy birthday, Rich. Long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Muhammad, Adia, Pat, Eric, Jean, uh, Bajit, and Ryan. Now, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, my apologies, but I still want to wish you a very sincere happy birthday today. And with that, we'll go over to our community here, automation.locals.com. That's where you can follow everything I do on the automation blog, on YouTube, anywhere, completely free. But if you do want to support the show and buy us one cup of coffee a month or more, you can do so here as well. And then you gain the access to, uh, you know, post your own questions, answer questions, message me directly using this button here, and so on. From there, I'd just like to remind everybody, just like Brandon T. did, you can send in um, news tips right here using this form. And now I should get them. They should be flagged so at a higher priority so I do see them right away. And also, if you're a vendor or you talk to a vendor on a regular basis, please ask them to consider sponsoring our show. We do have one sponsor right now who's going to be sponsoring the month of March. And uh, you'll be seeing their ads. You'll be seeing we'll be uh, thanking them for the sponsorship during the shows. And we'll also be doing some giveaways with them. And so if we can get a couple more sponsors, we can fill a couple of positions here and start, you know, bringing you even more news and even more how-tos every day uh, in appreciation of our sponsors and, you know, enabled by them. So from there, we want to go over to automate.news just to remind you that every single link we talk about in the morning show is right here. And I also want to remind you that we also do a daily blog on called uh, Automation This Morning over at theautomationblog.com. And this is where I include all the images and links to the stories we talk about. But you will also find here, you'll also find the video, a no commercial version of the video, in the podcast and links to all the places you can get the Automation Morning Show on Apple, iTunes, Google, Pandora, Spotify, and more. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And finally, I want to thank you for taking time out of your Friday to spend with me to talk about what's new in industrial automation. And with that, I just want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy weekend. And until next time, my friends, peace.